welcome to Yellowstone. Are you planning a trip to Yellowstone National Park? Well, watch this first because we've created a list of the top things to do in Yellowstone to make the most of your trip. We drove from Cody, Wyoming along the legendary Buffalo Bill Scenic Byway to the east entrance of Yellowstone National Park, where we enjoyed all of these amazing adventures in Yellowstone. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell so you get notified when we put up a new video each week. We are at the Excelsior Geyser and it is amazing. When you walk through, the steam just hits your face and it's so hot, fogs up your glasses. It's pretty incredible to see this massive geyser that down here. It had a huge eruption in the 1800s and uh, left this massive crater, which is really wild. The water is just so blue and crystal clear. The walk around Midway Geyser Basin is an accessible boardwalk that is just under a mile long. It begins with Excelsior Geyser, then continues to Grand Prismatic itself. This is spectacular. So this is definitely one of the busiest places in the park and with good reason. This is the Grand Prismatic and they have a, walk, a walkway all the way across it. This is the largest hot spring in the United States. And even though it's crowded at midday, it is good to see it when the sun is high for views of the best colors. Oh, steam, baby, steam! You can feel the heat coming out. It's actually a little chilly in the air. And then when the steam comes out, it's hot. And at times you can't see a thing. It's pretty awesome. The boardwalk then continues on to Opal Pool and Turquoise Pool. They are beautiful as well, but often overshadowed by Grand Prismatic. This is a place in Yellowstone that should not be rushed. Take your time to really enjoy the rainbow of colors and this once in a lifetime experience. Now, if, we're, if you are coming in on, by car, just if you see parking on the road, just park. Otherwise, you're stuck in the parking lot for a good 20 to 30 minutes. Um, once you get up here, it's really beautiful. And right now, it's cleared up gorgeous. Like a, little, a few minutes ago, it was just all steam, but now I can really see the colors. Now, this is just a portion of this. When you come around and do this boardwalk, you then want to go up and do the overlook. So that's where we're going to head to next, and I'll tell you how to get there. When leaving Midway Geyser Basin, turn right and drive about 1.5 miles following the Firehole River. There you'll come to the Fairy Falls and Grand Prismatic Overlook Trail. It's about a 20 minute walk to the Overlook and offers the best view of the Grand Prismatic Spring without having to pay for a helicopter. Walking up to the Grand Prismatic Viewpoint. It's about a 20 minute hike and uh, we're nearly there. Well, there it is. It's one thing to hike down there, but make sure you come up to the lookout to see the overview. It is beautiful. You get to see the whole Grand Prismatic and all of its colors. Now that's a view. The Overlook platform is small and it can be crowded. There is really only one place for an unobstructed view, so take your time and wait it out. The sun was coming in and out during our hike and we could see the colors change before our eyes as they were ignited by the beautiful sun's rays. We have arrived at Mammoth Hot Springs and it's not too crowded yet, so that's pretty exciting. It was very foggy and now the sun has lifted for this spectacular view. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. 
Mammoth Hot Springs is located at the north entrance of Yellowstone, and when we visited early in the morning, we had it all to ourselves. It is truly a spectacular scene with upper and lower boardwalks taking you through the terraced hot springs. It's hard to believe that anything lives in these thermal gases here, but there are billions of microorganisms called thermophiles that are just thriving in this environment. You don't want to go in there. That is hot, 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 but it is so incredible to see. It's just an array of colors. There are three parking lots where you can park beside each section, and the walkways take you through the entire area, all the way down to the lower boardwalk and Liberty Cap. Mammoth is amazing. So they have really done a beautiful job on this network of trails. It's all boardwalks going above the Mammoth Hot Springs, the thermal area. You can, there's all kinds of different tiers. There's upper, lower. So you can do a whole walk around to take in the entire geology of the place. It's quite spectacular. Well, I don't know. I have seen pictures of this before but I really didn't expect it to be this spectacular. Really make sure that you walk through all of the trails, the walking paths up here to see every little detail because it changes before your eyes. I personally think it gets better as you go higher up. After finishing up at Mammoth Hot Springs, you can pop into Mammoth Village to grab a coffee and check out the Mammoth Hot Springs Hotel. While we were there, we had a lucky break of seeing a large buck with his harem of female elk. The next place you must visit in Yellowstone is the most popular place in the park, the Upper Geyser Basin which is home to Old Faithful. Hi there. Old Faithful behind me there. Well, we have arrived at Old Faithful. Now, if you go into the visitor center, they will tell you the prediction of when it's going to go off. So we got here about 15 minutes after an eruption. So we have about an hour to waste, but you do want to go a bit early, at least a half an hour and get a seat because people are already sitting down. So it gets filled up quickly an hour in advance. So, Dave's scouting out a location right now, and I'm gonna go get a snack. This is a perfect time to relax and have your lunch. You can also watch Old Faithful erupt right here from the lodge, in the shade. All right, we are about to see Old Faithful. Yeah. It's the number one thing to do here in Yellowstone National Park. Yeah, so let's see how high it goes and if it's as impressive as they say. Old Faithful draws huge crowds every hour, and seating is lined up all around it in front of the visitor center and the Old Faithful Inn and Lodge. There is a 10 minute grace on either side, so you could be sitting for up to 30 minutes waiting for the geyser to burst into the air. The steam reaches 150 feet and is an exciting, if predictable, event. really impressed with it. It went higher. I was one of the people that went, woo! I thought it would have gone higher. Not really? Impressed. Yeah, honestly. He's hard to impress. When you come to watch Old Faithful, make sure to explore more of the Upper Geyser Basin. There are so many prismatic pools and geysers to see other than just Old Faithful. Now, that's the most predictable, but I find everything else a little bit more impressive and beautiful. So take a walk along this great boardwalk and check it all out. Old Faithful may be the most predictable, but there are other geysers that erupt daily. Crowds along the upper geyser basin really thin out on the wooden walkways. At least they did when we were there in September. 
We love spending the afternoon enjoying the views of all the different geysers and hot springs as we made our way to the Morning Glory Pool. Wave spring. So behind me is the world's tallest predictable geyser. They can predict it within two hours. And we're lucky right now because it's about to go off any time between now and the next two hours. So maybe if we stick around long enough, we still have some other things to see. We, may, we might be able to see it go off. There are so many features to see between Old Faithful and Morning Glory Pool. A straight walk will take 30 minutes, but we stopped so many times it was at least an hour one way. If you don't want to walk, there are bicycles for rent as well. Well, I think a lot of people just come and watch Old Faithful and then leave, but you really should walk out here to come and see Morning Glory. This is beautiful. And unlike the Grand Prismatic, you can get right up close. Well, you can get up close and personal to that as well, but this one, you're looking right over it and into it, which is really awesome. I am totally blown away by Yellowstone National Park. It really lives up to the hype. I guess that's why it was the very first national park in the entire world. It's just so beautiful in every turn that you make. A cool thing to do here in Yellowstone is the wake up to wildlife tour. You go out on this, uh, you go out on this bus here and you go around looking for wildlife. They have scopes, they have people who are searching. So it's a great way to see all of the wildlife. In the summertime, the tops come up and you can get out and take photographs. So we're looking for wildlife here. We're down at the Lamar Valley, which is the prime location for wildlife viewing here in Yellowstone. We've seen some buffalo, we've seen some antelope and some deer. Um, so you want to get out early in the morning because that's when the animals are most active. So we're just looking around here uh, at dawn and uh, that's when they're all out relaxing in the valley. Bring your binoculars. Well, we are in the Yellowstone traffic jam. It's a ton of bison. <laughs> I've seen people go around them. The Well, the park ranger went through and just kind of weaved his way through, but I'm a little concerned about doing that. So we're just going to wait it out for a few minutes. No one else is moving, so we'll see what other people do. Maybe someone will go by me yeah. and then I'll follow them. I think they enjoy slowing traffic down. Look at this watch though, when you get this close to them, you're like, holy smokes, they're big. Even the small ones are big. Even the small ones are big. Uh-oh. I think we're in trouble. What do you think? That was stressful. I started moving because we were sitting there a long time. So I thought, oh, I'll follow what the park ranger does. And so I started moving, but then like people, they all moved really quick, but then all of a sudden they came back in and we were surrounded. And I started thinking, oh, oh what if I'm in between something? What if they decide to ram us? But uh, eventually we just made it through. But I'm not gonna lie, that was very stressful. And I don't know if I did the right thing or not, but I just followed what the park ranger did. And that's what they did. They just drove around and kept weaving through as long as you keep moving, I guess. We are at the incredible Dunraven Overlook. Now this is a popular spot for sunrise. We drove by it earlier this morning, but I did want to show you where it is. If you are going to the Lamar Valley from Canyon Village, this is the first stop along the way. So you want to stop here in the morning for a quick shot of sunrise over the valley. Can you imagine how beautiful this is? From the Dunraven Overlook, you can see the neighboring Grand Teton Mountain Range peeking out from behind the Yellowstone Valley. When coming back from the Lamar Canyon, make sure you stop at the Calcite Springs. I was just expecting this hot springs or something, but it's an incredible canyon. So deep, just vistas for miles. It's incredible. I said it looked like a painting. Speaking of canyons, Yellowstone has its very own Grand Canyon. 
The Yellowstone River slices through the 24-mile-long Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. At its widest, it spans 4,000 feet and has a maximum depth of 1,200 feet. The most iconic place to see it is from Artist Point. We are on our way to the brink of Lower Falls. This is the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone National Park. We've done our fair share of hiking on this trip, that's for sure, so wear sturdy boots. So the Brink of Lower Falls is a lot farther down than they make it seem on the map. You're just going right down to the bottom of the canyon. So be prepared for the hike up if you want to do it. This is a really popular spot for sunrise. Unfortunately, when we came, it was all fogged in. Really bad sunrise that morning. So now we're just trying for a late afternoon picture to try and see something beautiful while we're here. You could really spend days just pulling over at all these incredible, incredible viewpoints. We are at the viewpoint for the Lower Falls right here, and it is just gorgeous overlooking the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. Last stop of the day, Inspiration Point. Let's go. You can't see any waterfalls from Inspiration Point, but it's a beautiful viewpoint of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. And it's a quick and easy stop on your Yellowstone itinerary. Another waterfall in the park to keep an eye out for is Tower Falls. It was this view that helped to inspire Congress to designate Yellowstone as a national park. When looking for wildlife here in Yellowstone, you want to come to the Hayden Valley. Uh, sunrise and sunset or dawn and dusk, that's when you really want to start looking because that's when the animals are out. Hayden Valley is not only the place for wildlife spotting, it is also a beautiful valley filled with rolling hills. It's centrally located close to where we were staying at Canyon Village, so we could easily be out there for sunrise and sunset. We found Canyon Lodge to be an excellent base for exploring Yellowstone. One of the things that makes Yellowstone so unique are the geysers everywhere. This is a fantastic overview where you can just see all of the steam coming out of the thermal hot springs that are just all over this park. It's truly spectacular and makes it one of the very most unique places on earth. We have come to Barrel Springs and the this geyser is so powerful, it's almost overwhelming. We were driving by and just had to stop. Look at this coming out behind me. It's truly amazing. Look at that power. Something I love about Yellowstone is that you can just pull off the side of the road with the, for these spectacular views. So often in other places you have to hike far for things like this. We were driving just along, looked over and went, what the heck is that? I didn't even know this was here. I had never heard of Roaring Mountain before, but here it is right on the drive here in Yellowstone National Park. Well, Deb should have heard of Roaring Mountain because it is one of the top attractions in Yellowstone National Park. The mountain is alive with steam vents known as fumaroles, which create that famous loud roar. Well, the final stop of our time here in Yellowstone is at Yellowstone Lake. This is such a vast and beautiful lake and there are pull-offs all the way along. There's some beaches. It is on your way out back when you go back to Cody, so I highly recommend stopping here for sunset. It's absolutely magical. The beaut overlook, it's where to be for sunset here in Yellowstone. One of the most popular places in all of Yellowstone is the Lake Butte Overlook. It offers a fantastic view of the largest high elevation lake in all of North America. And that was Yellowstone National Park.
If you enjoyed our videos, make sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications because we put up new travel videos every week.